Hi there, my name is Kieran Nicoledo, also known as the Athlete Educator, and in this short training, we're going to be covering my top 10 ways of how to get fitter and faster for fighting. Now, just to give you a bit of background about myself, uh, I've been in the combat sports space since 2010 when I was doing boxing at university. From there, loved it so much that it really saved my life. Uh, coming up, I was doing it casually initially, just sort of here and there from occasion. But then 2012 came and I was going through some challenges, some mental health challenges at university. Um, substance abuse, um, not treating my body with care. And that's when I really decided to focus in on boxing and kickboxing to really give me something to focus my energy towards. Lo and behold, later on that year, I, I sort of trained up really hard. 2013 had amateur kickboxing bouts where I got a silver medal in the national championships and also competed in boxing and scoring sort of stoppages and wins. Since then, I've been qualified as a personal trainer in 2013 and um, boxing coach 2013 and also a personal trainer. And now what I do is I share these lessons that I've learned through boxing that have helped me with my training, but also helped me in life as well. So helped me to lose weight in other ways as well. So again, this is going to teach you just a bit of background about myself. But here, this training is all about you and what you're looking to achieve. And I take it you want to get faster and fitter for fighting, whether that's boxing or kickboxing, Muay Thai, a striking discipline, these rule sets will apply. Now, to begin, my number one tool to get faster and fitter for fighting is going to be to first understand where is the speed? Like, what do we need when I say speed? What am I referring to? So, when it comes to fighting, there's a few areas where you're going to be developing your speed. First, you've got your footwork. So in terms of how fast your feet move in a combat scenario. Second is your hand speed. How fast are you able to throw your punches? Second, third is looking at your reflexes in terms of your reaction speed. How quickly are you able to react to those scenarios? And fourth, we're looking at the ability to be able to move your head. What's your head movement like? So once we've got that, you've got your foot speed, we've got your hand speed, we've got the speed in terms of with your head movement and your reaction speed. The fifth thing that puts that all together is in your ability to do that over a long period of time. So there we're talking more around stamina, but is in being able to maintain your speed over a duration is another skill in itself. So we're going to cover all five of those in the training and we're going to be going through some questions and giving you some certain tools you can use along the way. So number one, my first favorite tool we're going to use, I say, it's got to be the skipping rope. So skipping is a great tool to help you with your footwork, helps you with your arms, but the great thing with a skipping is it's going to get your coordination with your foot and your arm, so it's helping with your foot speed and also work with your hand speed. So just traditionally, if you were skipping, you would just jump the rope, traditionally. Now, if you want to learn to add speed, what I'd encourage is it's doing it, rather than doing it at a comfortable pace, you want to get some rounds where you're increasing some intervals. So you'll be adding some double unders that will require more shoulder speed, more explosive speed from your calves when you're going for it. So if I was just to demonstrate, you start there, then so you just do a double under each time and work towards that. The aim of the game, I would aim for when you're able to do anywhere between 30 to 50 in one go and continue to repeat that. So my first tip and piece of advice is using your skipping rope, get really comfortable with skipping, building it over time. That's gonna help with your speed in terms of footwork, hand speed, it's working your shoulders, working your calves, core, everything is working in conjunction with each other. So that's the number one thing. 
The second tool I encourage, which again requires you to work, use your legs, but also your arms will be moving, is that sprinting. So if you want to add more speed to your training and to your boxing, something that you really need to start to include maybe once to twice a week are sprints. This can be done in many forms. So you're able to do sprinting for distance, so like 800 meters, 400 meters, 200 meters. Set yourself a goal of doing anywhere between three to four rounds of each one and give yourself a three minute break in between each round. Once you do that, that will give you a time, that gives you a baseline. That baseline, you're now able to work on and try to aim to decrease those times by up to 20%. This will happen over time, so you have to give yourself, be patient on your journey, but this is another way in terms of how we can increase our speed. When we're able to move our hands and feet fast, that will help. If you wanna go for shorter distances, perhaps do hill sprints, Therefore, you're at an incline, or you can put interval on, on your treadmill, put it at an incline anywhere between four to 10%. Sprint 30 seconds or 100 meters, then you'll find that will also be able to work each time building up the pace and adjusting. And thirdly, if either of those, you don't have access to those, it's cold, just working on the spot, sprinting on the spot. So if you're here, then learning to fire full force, your body is quick at adapting. So it's all about these adaptations that we make to our training. So therefore, when we do get back to our boxing and when we're hitting the bag, we've got that speed which we can use and apply to the game. The next way that we're going to use to be able to get faster and fitter for fighting is our next tool. Very popular, dumbbells. So I want you next time, just shadow boxing using your dumbbells. So we don't have to start off going slowly. So where you're just working the motion. So you're working the form, keeping that control. You're in position, jab, cross, rolling. You're moving your head. You're adjusting, you're throwing your shots. And then every now and again, you then aim to increase that speed. So you're still focusing on, on your technique making sure you're moving, and then occasionally, <laughs> you increase that burst. You throw a quick combo. <laughs> then you're back to control. Keep doing this, and this will also enable you to increase the hand speed that you'll have when boxing. So, I'd encourage, aim to do two to three minute rounds, whether you're amateur or um, uh, elite, two to three minute rounds with your shadow box and dumbbells, aim to do anywhere between three to five rounds, two, three times a week, will really help boost your speed over time. The next, and also probably one of my favorite ways to increase your speed, so getting faster and fitter for fighting, is the resistance bands. Now there are different resistance bands. This one is specifically for boxing or striking. So it's an Everlast resistance band. But if you don't have this, you could just use a normal resistance band. I'd probably just use a medium, medium resistance. So here now, I'm gonna first do this. You put them underneath your armpits keeping those elbows in, you're in position, into thumb, jab, jab, cross, double jab, cross, up, cut, up, cross, double jab, cross, cross, up, cross, up, cut, up, cross, combo four, combo five, six, seven, eight. So there we go. We can use it with our resistance bands or ideally, if you have got this, or you can get one on Amazon from Everlast, but there's lots of brands here, so it's comfortable. The difference between this is the hand positioning. It was built more for this form of training and less chafing on the back because of the band. So you're here, you're throwing your jab, 
Working your combos. Body head. Jab cross. Uppercut cross. Now you'll feel the build up in the tension in your shoulders, especially in your deltoids. Keeping those hands up when you're doing it. But trust me, give it time. Your punching is gonna feel so much easier and lighter when you don't have this. So that's our next tool. So just to make sure we covered that, first we've got skipping. We're working on getting to the double unders, 30 to 50 reps in one set, being able to complete up to five sets of that. Second, we've got our sprints, 800, 400, 200 meter sprints, aiming for three to four rounds of each with a three minute break in between. If you're otherwise, you've also got the option to do hill sprints in the gym um, or outside incline if you're doing it in the gym, four to 10% incline, 30 second bursts, give yourself a minute recovery and continue working. So that'll work on your speed and stamina. If you want to focus more on speed, increase your break so that way you've got longer recovery. If you want to work more on stamina, decrease those breaks, but keeping, maintaining that speed and that intensity. Fourth, we just covered was with our resistance bands, which we just used, shadow boxing with our resistance bands, and also shadow boxing with dumbbells. So those are our four so far. Next, we're gonna get onto the bag. So, the best way, or one of the best ways to work on improving your, your speed is also learning to hit the bag. Now the reason why so far I don't start using the bag and a lot of the content we've started without the bag is because a punch bag can also start getting you into, into bad habits. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say in a boxing ring, if I was against an opponent, my, me and my opponent are boxing, I'm throwing my hands, I'm throwing my combinations, but each time, have you noticed, I have to pull my hand back. There's nothing there to stop it. Sometimes when you're boxing with an opponent and they're slipping, they're using their footwork to get out of position, you could fall off of balance if you're expecting them to stop. And that's what a bag can do. With a bag, each of your punches are being stopped by the bag. So you're used to hitting and not having to pull your hand back as quickly. Rather than when you're shadow boxing, you're used to having to throw the punch and back to original. Jab, cross, back into position. So that's why we want to build and get more comfortable with our shadow boxing first. Once we're confident and great with our shadow boxing, we then introduce more onto the bag. So first, in terms of working on speed, we're going to do interval bag drills. So all that would look like is working 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off, and how we would do that is you'd go, there's, I'm gonna talk you through two. There's dozens of different ways, but I'm gonna talk you through two in particular. One way is let's say you'd go 10 seconds on. So let's say you're here, he's in the bag getting ready. Three, two, one. So you're there for 10 seconds. Then for 20 seconds, you're going nice and light. So you don't stop. You're just adjusting your pace. Buzzer goes again. Next 10 seconds. Keeping that chin down, punching fast. Then again, 20 seconds. You're moving around the bag. You're keeping busy. You're working your opponent. The time comes again. <laughs> 10 seconds on, we slow it down again, and there you have it, 20 seconds on, sorry, 10 seconds intense, bursts, 20 seconds recovery, you do this for 4 minutes like a Tabata round, so you do 8 in total, in consecutive, a total of 4 minutes, it's going to be working on your speed, it's also gonna build your stamina. The great thing about this versus throwing 
And then recovering is, you're not gonna just have to box for 10 seconds. You wanna to learn to be able to start to control the pace of the fight. And so that's what we're doing here. We're kind of going in with a flurry. Boom, 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 boom. You thrown, you thrown. Okay, I've got some points. Let me recover. Let me breathe, 20 seconds. Okay, I'm keeping defensive. I'm keeping them thinking, keeping them thinking. Now I go again. Boom, 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 boom. Again, with these punches, you can alternate them. They don't just have to be straight. You could do, let's say, 10 seconds straight. The next round, ah, 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 ah. 10 seconds hooks. You know, you could go 10 seconds as fast with your jab. Then up next round, 10 seconds as fast with your cross. 10 seconds, as many hooks. However you want to make it up, you can adjust it. But it's the principle, tw 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off. That is our next speed drill. Another interval drill you can do on the bag. Floyd Mayweather used to do this. I would say this is more on your endurance rather than your speed, but they will tie in together. So what you would do is you would start by doing straight punches, anywhere up to, I would say 200. So you're just here, throwing straight punches, jab crosses, jab crosses, 200. Then from there, every 10, you then come and drop down into a body shot. So one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> then two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> and then you can start doubling them up. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. <coughs> one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. You get the point. You do that for a three minute round. So you first start off with just throwing 100, 200 punches on the bag. Then every 10, you throw a big shot to the body, left or right. It also gets you used to the weight distribution and how to move your feet when you are boxing as well. So, now we have completed the first half. During this time, now that we've completed our first five ways to train to get you faster and fitter for fighting, I wanna use this moment to talk about two things. One, my book, 12 Boxing Principles of Success. So in case you haven't read it yet, it's called the 12 Boxing Principles of Success. Train like a fighter, think like a champion. Lots of tips, advice in terms of how you can improve your boxing skills. Um, had an opportunity to interview some of the best trainers in the world, including Gerald Tucker, senior. That's Floyd Mayweather, Clarissa Shields, Tyrone Woodley's trainer, and Adrian Broner. So again, got some great insights, but also not just the training element, but the thinking, learning life principles, Things like discipline, respect, focus, hard work, dedication, which will serve you in the ring, but also in life. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, go onto my website, that's www.kiranekalado.com. You can get a signed copy there, or again, if you go onto Amazon, you'll be able to get one directly there too. So um, yeah, just wanted to give a sponsor plug for myself during the adverts. And secondly, is now talking about measuring these things. So here we've got some goals, we've discussed what we're gonna do, but we now wanna see how do we measure our speed? And when it comes to punching, there's some fitness trackers that you can use. Um, you may have seen it, if you go onto my Instagram, I use fitness trackers with my clients. We're able to track how many punches they can throw in 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. And that gives us the data that we can then test every four to eight weeks to see how they're improving and how their speed is increasing based on these drills that we're doing. So once we've done that, now we're gonna go through the second half. So our next five ways of how you can get faster and fitter for fighting. So straight into it, number six. This is going to be talking about our Running, simple. If you want to get faster, 
run for longer, but this is more endurance running. So we've done our sprinting. We want to now do endurance running, whereby we're working at a zone two. When I say zone two, that's essentially where a talkable run, where you're able to run and you can still comfortably have a conversation with somebody. Many trainers and coaches will tell you to say, do you know what, you want to be running at, um, you know, that, that really hard, intense feeling to match, match and mirror what you're going to be feeling in the boxing match. And they are right. There is an element, there is a time for doing that. But also, if you're trying to build on your aerobic capacity, it's important to work at the lower zones. So when we look at some of the best runners in the world, people like Mo Farah, um, Eliud Kipchoge, the people who are running marathons at paces, people sprint at, oftentimes they're working in their lower zones, in terms of their lower heart rate zones, building up their aerobic capacity, and at the same time they then add speed training alongside that to match it. But they focus 70 to 80% of their time on building up their aerobic capacity, the other 20% on the more intense work. So I want to encourage you to start running longer distances. Stick to maybe three to, three to five miles for your main run. And then for your long run, maybe aiming for anywhere between five to eight. If you are injured, rowing, swimming or cycling are a lot better on your knees or a lot easier for your knees to do. Um, so again, those are different options that you can take for your long runs. But when doing these long runs, I encourage you to not just only listen to music. Sometimes it's nice to go out and just listen to music and go for a run. Other times, what we want to do is we want to test ourselves. So if you're out for a run, I listen to audiobooks whilst running. I may listen to motivational tapes. So if I am listening to music, I'm able to test. I'll try to run while speaking. So I'll be singing along to the whatever song is playing. And what that does, it means I can, I've still got control of my breathing. I'm still running at a pace which is manageable for me and that will then get you comfortable if you do want to smack talk in the ring and you're there and you just want to talk to your opponent again be respectful but at the same time have fun with it it is a game it's a sport so you know some of my favorite boxers are trash talkers in the ring and that happens from being able to practice and work that zone alternatively if you are in the gym and you're running on a treadmill Something that I love to do, and uh, I learned this from a friend of mine, Rion, Rion Wong, uh, K1 world champion. When running, test your mind. So you may have on life fitness treadmills, you'll have different tools like Sudoku quizzes or chess. I love to play a game of chess whilst running. So I'll go at a lower intensity, perhaps running anywhere between nine to, to 11 kilometers per hour. So it's nice and light for me. Obviously, everybody's got a different light. But then whilst doing it, I'll be playing chess because that now makes that I have to keep myself mentally sharp and aware while still putting myself under physical exertion. And that's what will happen when you're in the ring. When you're in the corner, when you're trying to observe and take in all the data that your opponent's giving you, their feints, their looks, are you still able to focus whilst feeling tired? Can you find the openings? Can you see them? That will come through practice and through breathing and through doing those longer runs to build up on your aerobic capacity. So that's number six. Number seven, we're going to go straight into, this one's plyometrics. So plyometrics is more referring to explosive movements. This can be done like in circuit training, what I would encourage. Anywhere between from three moves up to perhaps 10 is the maximum. And you just work on explosive moves. So for instance, if you want to increase your, your foot speed, one could be, I'll, I'll just give you a simple circuit to work on sort of improving your, your foot speed, is let's say, get a step or a ladder going in and out, in and out. Doing that for a 40 second interval, you then break. The next one, you're then going for jumping lunges. So you're here for 40 seconds, shake them out when you need to, Keep going, 20 second break. Third one, star jumps. So let's say you touch the tongue of your shoe, and up, and up, and up, and up. Do these three moves, 40 seconds each, 20 second break. So that's a three minute round. Take a one minute break after that. Do that three times, really good. We'll work on your explosiveness. In terms of if you wanna work on your speed, 
you could incorporate some of the moves we've already discussed and some of the other points. So it could be one round of straight punches, just in the air with uh, using your dumbbells. The next 40 seconds double unders with your skipping rope. The next resistance bands, 40 seconds. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And then take one minute break after that. That three minute round, will you will feel it. And you'll notice that that will then, your body will start to adapt to working at higher, faster intensities on a regular basis. So that's number seven. Number seven. Third, which I can, I slightly just touched upon, eight is, sorry, eight is ladder drills. So it's just down to our last three. Stay with me. And again, if you stay till the end, I do have another bonus coming up. So it does pay to listen. So next, ladder drills. Ladder drills, you can find ladders anywhere you can buy them online. Otherwise, you can even just get a piece of chalk, draw them out. And what you would do is just work on different ladder drills. So on my Instagram, The Athlete Educator, I've got a few different videos where I talk about ladder drills and how you can use them. But just for some simple moves, what you could do is just work on going forwards and backwards into the ladder. So if the ladder was lined out to the side, you would go in, back, in, out, in, out, in, out. Alternatively, you could bring your feet out, in, out, in. Go in, moving forwards and backwards on the ladder. Another one, if you want to work on maybe stabilization on the balance, doing it on one foot, in, out, in, out. So you're moving backwards and forwards, do it on one leg, do it on the other. For this exercise, I would encourage longer breaks because this is more of a higher intensity, really focused on top speed. So ladder drills, really great to incorporate within your training as well. Next, these last two, the reason why I save them is because one, I don't have them with me, and two, for most, they will be less accessible than the other options I've given. So the first one is a double end bag. So a double end bag, um, not very much, heavy bags, very popular, very common within the boxing and combat space. A double end bag is a bag which is attached to two strings. So there's a string on top and there's a string below. And then what you're doing is you're, you're hitting the bag, you're timing it, you're hitting it, you're waiting for it to come back. You will see many boxers like Ryan Garcia, Floyd Mayweather um, are very commonly seen using the double end bag. Because we don't have one, I'm not going to spend much time talking about it. And also, I haven't had the opportunity to use it much as well. You get many gyms that I've been to, they don't have it. Sometimes you get one round in every now and again, so I haven't had as much time to own it, but I do understand it's important in terms of hand-eye coordination, in terms of timing. It is a useful tool, so if you do have it, great, but there are enough other tools that you can use to continue working on your speed and your stamina without having that, but a great addition. Last but not least, one of my favorites. Again, I've got other videos using it, Muhammad Ali used to be notorious for using it. We don't have one here, but it is more common in gyms, but not extra common. So that's why we save them till last again. That is the speed bag. So the speed bag is a bag which is attached, small ball attached, you can hit it from side to side, and you're essentially works on keeping those shoulders up as you're hitting it, you're timing the bag, it hits the top of the ceiling, it's the other side and the top again comes back. You hit it, bam, 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 bam. There's other ways to do it, but that's the most common one. Makes a lot of noise, a lot of racket. Um, some coaches, my old coach um, literally got angry with me the other day because I was making lots of noise whilst using it training. But hey, that is the aim of the game. Hit it, keep it moving and keep hitting it. So there we have uh, my top 10 ways on how you can get faster and fitter for fighting. So I hope you've enjoyed the list that we've covered today. And yeah, it'd be great to hear how you found it. Send me a DM. Let me know if this was useful, if you're able to get something, which was your favorite or which are the ones that you've used in the past to help you work on your speed. Um, I'm also really interested in hearing about any other tools that you may use to work on your speed. They're the list 
does go a lot longer, but I just want to focus on these 10 for this video. And if you got value from this video, why not hop on a call where we can go into more precise information around your goals, helping you get fighting fit for the ring and for life. These principles we teach you to prepare you for boxing, but there's other principles we teach you to prepare you for life in terms of the mindset that you need to help approach for boxing, but also any other battles you may be facing outside of the ring too. Lastly, you've got my Calendly link, so just check below to book a time for a free consultation where we can discuss anything, boxing, mindset, to help you towards your goals. Four areas that we work on within the Fighters and Champions Academy is looking at developing your speed, like what we discussed today, working on your strength, working on your stamina, and far, fourth and finally, working on your skill set. We help you develop those from a physical element, but also from a mental aspect as well. So this training is not just about physicality, but also about mindset and mentality and how we approach life and how we approach the ring. So again, this was great to serve you. Send me a message with what you liked most and most importantly, click that link below. Book your call so we can get you started on the Fighters and Champions Academy. Stay blessed, people. Stay blessed.